So we're here at the Biosphere 2 in the middle of the Sonoran Desert, um, about a half an hour north of Tucson. Um, this place was put up in the early 90s. From 1991 to 1993, um, eight research scientists locked themselves in it to basically see if they could create a completely closed system um, to see if we could, you know, make one here or even on Mars. Um, so this building right behind me is the research center and where they did all of their work. Let's see if I can point and do this. Um, so that was like the library up top. This is their living quarters. Um, over here is the rainforest. Behind that was their ocean and the desert and their food systems. Um, so my dad actually brought me here when I was about 10 when the research was going on. And so I'm really excited to be able to go inside um, today. And uh, I thought I'd bring you guys along to do so and see how all of this uh, experimentation went inside of this completely closed system. When we first entered the grounds, we encountered the enclosure for the rainforest. It originally had 400 plants, insects, lizard, frogs, and even bush babies, some little uh, creatures that fly, flew around up in the trees. You can see now as we approach that it's very kind of grown and thick in there. It looks like a soupy rainforest and I'm super excited to go inside in a little bit. The rainforest now only contains 98 species um, as the pollinators and hummingbirds um, other things that they brought in like lizards have all died off and several of the plants have as well. Over here you can see the human quarters um, that we're going to get to go into in just a few minutes where the Biospherians lived and worked during their time here. And in the back of the living quarters is the space where they grew their crops originally and now conduct all the research on soil. After checking out the grounds we get to rock through the real airlock door that they went in for their experiment and just get a quick view of the quarters that they lived in and conducted a lot of their research. This is where they grew their food along to the right, um, over 80 crops, including a whole lot of sweet potatoes, beans, and other vegetables. And then we get to walk into this beautiful orchard full of what they used to call the sweet shop, all kinds of edible fruits from oh, trees. Yeah, the fig tree. Oh yeah, so they try to grow food on all their trees. And a women tree. It's staying in season too. That's pretty interesting, right? Coffee. It took so long to grow the coffee beans, which you can see with the little berries on this tree, that the Biospherians were only able to have one cup every two to three weeks. They also grew guavas and bananas, and this would have been the way that they would have gone up into um, their own sort of enclosure in the rainforest up through that door. Um, but we don't get to go that far. You can see the banana leaves there. Uh, we get to go outside and around to check out where they grew their food. This is where the literal meat and potatoes of the experiment were grown. Goats, chickens, pigs, like I said, potatoes, peanuts, tomatoes, were all grown in this area um, while the Biospherians lived here. They produced 80% of their diet, were considered calorie deficient, and they lost 20 to 25% of their body fat, but nutritionally okay. Anyway, from the actual biosphere, we can first see the cooling towers that helped maintain the temperature within the biome. Without them, uh, within 20 minutes, a lot of the plants would start dying. Then we can see sort of our powerhouse where there is a diesel and a natural gas generator um, to help keep all of the electrical components of the system running in case of a power outage. Check it out. These are called lungs. And inside of here is this giant piece of rubber with steel in the middle. And as the air got hot inside of the biosphere, it expands so it would fill up. And then when the air cools, it could contract. And so it allowed them to basically store all of their oxygen while they were sealed inside of the biosphere for two years because they had to have a place for all this air to go. And then that one over there is the second lung and you can see the biosphere. Without those lungs, all of these glass panels on a really hot day would get blown out from the pressure of the air expanding inside. Um, and on a cold day, they would completely implode um, from the lack of air pressure on the inside. So now that we've looked at some of the support systems and the human habitats, let's go check out some of the biomes that have been created on the inside. So this is designed as a coastal desert, 20, 30 degrees northern or southern latitude, where at night the water evaporates and then basically forms a fog and falls back down. So these things get sort of fed by fog every day. And it is really, really humid in here. As we walk up the stairs through this desert biome, we start to notice that the trees start to get a little bit bigger and thicker. Um, there's still cacti that are all around and a lot of thought was put into where they were gonna put these plants, how they were gonna sequentially transition these biomes 
um, which plants were going to create carbon dioxide, support each other, um, and you can see kind of looking out how different it is than the Sonoran Desert here in Arizona. So right next to this now we've transitioned into what they call the mangrove forest, which gets a whole lot thicker and a whole lot soupier feeling. These mangroves grow in salt water, which you can sort of see down there. So they do some salt water in the biome here. And they excrete the salt actually on the back of their leaves. As we make our way out of the mangroves, we walk up the stairs and get into another transitional zone, getting us to the savanna. Here's a guava tree, other trees that they're putting up. Um, you can see here there's still a few desert things like the crown of thorns. And then we find our way to the 700,000 gallon ocean that they have. So this is the largest experimental ocean. It happens to be in the Sonoran Desert. Right over there is a wave wall that creates artificial waves. Um, they put coral in here and then did some research on the effect of uh, CO2 levels and how that causes ocean acidification and actually wound up stressing out all the coral to the point that it all died. Um, so that's part of how we know that that's what's going on in the larger ecosystem because of the research done here at the biosphere. From the ocean savanna, we walk into the rainforest and the first thing that struck me was just how hot, how thick, how humid and soupy it was in here. There's an abundance of trees and plants and vines, as you can see. Um, they're like growing on the lattice structure of the biosphere itself. So it's not even that thick with trees, it's vines that are growing all over the things that are inside of there. Originally there were sugar babies, lizards, and frogs that were all jumping around in here, but there's no animals that live in the biosphere anymore. And the people have to come in and cut and groom it regularly because how thick the plants get. Um, but they're able to do a lot of really cool experiments in here to see how temperature, increase, decrease, the amount of carbon dioxide, how all those different factors affect this particular biome. Um, it is crazy humid, like I am sweating profusely. Um, and some of these plants grow 91 feet tall. A lot of people consider the biosphere to be a failed experiment, but good scientists know that we learn a lot more from failure than we do from success. One of the big problems was with oxygen. They wound up losing seven tons of oxygen over the course of this study and spent a lot of time trying to hunt it down. They went from 22% to 15% oxygen, um, which was like living at 12,000 feet altitude. Um, they were very tired, had sleep apnea, had cognitive um, difficulties, and wound up adding in oxygen at day 500 and day 730 of the mission. What they found out was, firstly, there was a bunch of microbes in the soil that were breathing in the oxygen and expelling carbon dioxide, um, which definitely changed the game of what they thought was going to happen. Um, the second thing that happened was that then the carbon dioxide was sucked in by the concrete um, and not regurgitated back out into the system or available for use. And so that seven tons was gone. They also had issues with invasive species, ants, cockroaches, algae in the ocean, and morning glory vines, um, which started choking out the plants in a lot of their areas. So they spent a lot of time and energy trying to fight off those invasive species. And that still is happening in um, the biosphere today. Because the structure was made out of metal and glass and concrete, we've already talked about some of the issues with the concrete, um, but one of the problems with the metal is that when it's exposed to these high levels of humidity, it starts to rust. Um, the glass, when um, it's being pushed on by these plants and the pressure from the inside has started to crack. And so if we're gonna build some other biome structure on another planet, we really need to think about the materials that we're gonna take there and make sure that they're going to be maximally efficient for us. Great psychological data came from this as well, because when you lock eight people into 2.75 acres for two years, there's gonna be some issues. The major one came from uh, the group separating into two factions, one of which wanted to keep the system closed to try to make a biosphere that was going to be able to be completely self-contained. The other group wanted to branch out more into just kind of individual biome experiments. Um, and it was really the psychological issues along with the nutritional things that led to the end of the experiment in 1993. Nobody lives inside the biosphere anymore, but they continue to conduct experiments inside and outside of the facility to look at how we can marry the biosphere, atmosphere, hydrosphere, um, and geosphere into a really functional thing with our technology to help us to improve living here and potentially on another planet. This aquaponics experiment going on in the savanna area has five levels starting with fish on the top that have a lot of nitrogen in their waste. This filters down to the second level with asparagus, rhubarb, and tomato. The third level with rosemary, basil, and blackberries. 
fourth level lemongrass squash cucumber and raspberries and the fifth level with dwarf lemon and geranium the nutrients filter through each of the levels as the water cycles back and forth to provide all of the plants with the nutrients that they need They've also turned the farm into basically a giant stream table so that they can look at how the water cycle impacts the geosphere um, and get a feel for what happens to water when it goes underground. This agrivoltaic system provides shade to the plants as they grow to extend their growing season. And then the plants produce water as they grow to cool the solar panels, increasing the efficiency of the solar panels and the growing season of the plants. Do you think we've learned enough from our grand experiment here at the biosphere to head on to Mars? Or do we have a little bit more to learn about our planet before we go colonize another?